that gimmick. Joined today by Keith Vondere, a red shirt from the University of Evansville soccer team, sophomore from Evansville Wrights, and uh, injury kind of set you out this season. How are things going as far as not being able to participate with the team this year? Uh, it hasn't, hasn't been as bad as I thought it was. It's, it's kind of hard. Don't, don't feel like much part of the team, not be down there getting to play or anything, but uh, still try to go to the practices, see all the home games, what have you. It, it hasn't been as as bad as I thought. 7-1-1 one one Evansville is in their last nine matches, ranked number 23 this year in the country, or this week in the country, number three in the Great Lakes region behind University uh, or Indiana University and Wisconsin-Milwaukee. You mentioned Marquette coming in 6-10, and ten, used to be a member of the MCC, has gone away from that with the great Midwest Conference getting started on way. And a big story here today, Fred Smaltz going for win number 300 in his career, and probably a good opportunity for the Aces to pick it up here for him at home. Seems like they have really got the offense going, and uh, everybody seems to be back into the swing of things after a struggle early in the season. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Uh, got off to a shaky start. Seems like uh, last seven or eight games, it's really settled down. They pretty much the same lineup, and that, that has to help some, and just see how they end up doing today. Play is underway here at Coke's, our uh, Black Beauty Field. We were at Coke Soccer Field over the weekend with the high school sectionals, and here we see Evansville getting underway right in a hurry. Graham Merriweather trying to get a shot on goal, and just over the crossbar. And it seems like Graham and also Steve Church has really picked up uh, some of the action as far as being able to get the offense going. Yeah, that's got to be one of the first times this year he had a shot in the first 30 seconds of the game. Usually, the other team comes down on us. That's got to be a good start for the Aces today. And also a story here, David Weir, not able to play today, picked up his fifth yellow card of the season Friday in the big win over Loyola, which clinched the MCC regular season for U of E, so he is not in action today. Play, playing really as far as taking the forward position, Greg Brown, who got that game-winning goal against Loyola Friday evening. Here we see Marquette getting the ball across midfield. Matt Brains trying to get the ball into Pat Horton, one of the defensive backs. And we see a good play from Jeff Shoy, just making sure the ball was out of the way. And it should be a goal kick awarded here to Evansville. Yeah, number 14 there, Adam Ithier. He's going to be one of the guys that backs have to watch today. Very fast player. Uh, scored some goals earlier this year from Marquette. Saw him on TV against uh, Cleveland State. And they're just going to have to watch him today. As far as the strikers or the sweepers, the two forwards for this Marquette University, Matt Brains, number nine, and also number 14, Adam Ithier. Ithier comes in the leading scorer as far as Marquette. 14 points with six goals, two assists. And really, they have only got about 14 players here today. For whatever reason, the uh, entire squad didn't make it. You look down on the bench, and there's about three reserves. So if they do have injury problems, that could be a key as the play continues here today. Evansville controlling the ball into their side of the offense. And there we see a clearing out by Tom Gambanese for Marquette, Rolling just getting the in. ball over into the corner area over there. A throw-in awarded Mark Bullen for Evansville. Getting the ball into Steve Church, and Steve, along with Graham, as we mentioned, has really come on and picked up some of the offense the last couple games. Yeah, I think he only had one goal in the first uh, probably five or six games. He really picked it up lately and it's helped the Aces out a lot. And a good opportunity there and just good defense there. We saw the keeper, Dave Wolf come out and get challenged, and uh, Evansville trying to pick up an open shot there. Shane Schmidt over into the corner trying to find something, and that's usually where we're going to see David Weir in that situation when Evansville gets those corner kicks and trying to get the ball with the heading situation. Are they going to be able to go without that there today, you think? Well, they're going to play a little different style uh, is where they're going to put the ball on the cross. Uh, Dave's really a big force in there in the air as we're on the ground. It's just going to have to change his style a little bit today, I'm sure. And the defenses seem to be a big key as far as Evansville all season long. They struggled early, but I think everything is starting to go their way, and there we see kind of a collision between Shoy at midfield, no call. Continues the uh, momentum, Evansville's way into their offensive end. And a good defensive play there by Marquette. Stealing the ball away from Bolin, and I think Marquette being struggling sort of this year, they are 6-10 and 10 overall, as we mentioned, and 1-3 and three in the great Midwest Conference coming in. They know Evansville is a tough team, familiar with them from their MCC play the years past. And I think when you take on a team like Evansville, you really have to come in kind of as a defensive ploy. You don't worry about scoring so many goals, trying to stop the offense of the other team. Yeah, that's exactly what happened Friday with Loyola. They came in, uh, played just defense first half, and uh, as it ended up, it didn't really work for them. All they're trying to do is just get a counter on us, which is what a lot of teams have done this year. But uh, Luckily for us, we got away with that one at the win, and uh, I'm sure Marquette's going to come out with the same strategy today. And in goal, as usual, for the Evansville Aces, Trey Harrington, and Trey has had a great season so far. 
similar to what he had last year. Not quite as well. Obviously, we've got a different type of team this year. Shots on goal for average 1.07 as far as points allowed. He's picked up 36 saves, only allowed 14 goals. Record in goal is 8-4-1. Has been a starter in 13 of Evansville's 15 ball games. And here we see Marquette on the move. Adam Ithier, again, the uh, striker that is capable of scoring for these Marquette Warriors. Evans are doing a good job clearing the ball out again. And when you come in against a team like this with a big win Friday night, obviously you're going to be pumped up because Fred's got an opportunity to pick up number 300. But you've clinched the regular season, the MCC. You're going to get an automatic buy come tournament time. Do you look past a team like Marquette? I don't think you do. I think uh, everybody, you know, is thinking in the back of their mind about the 300th win for Fred. But uh, I'm sure he'll tell you today, you know, today's just another one. You want to come out and get it. Uh, you know, if he loses it, I don't think he's going to remember it. But uh, if he gets it, I'm sure he will. So I'm sure for everybody else, it's just going to be another game today. And Evansville trying to clear the ball again. Nico Cachera getting the ball across midfield. Kicked out by Evansville and awarded a throw in to Marquette. And looks like Steve Church trying to get something going Evansville's way, but uh, the referee standing right there awarding the throw in to Marquette. Nico Cachera over there trying to intercept the pass. Trying to get something going and there we see no penalty, although maybe a tripping. And it looks like the physical play is apparent here early on. We see Josh Norman, a midfielder for Marquette, on the ground a couple times. It wasn't a bad free kick there. I think what we're trying to do is just catch uh, Evansville napping. Look, uh, the player's trying to hit on the far side. It wasn't really ready for the pass. He might have been able to spring something on us there, but uh, just weren't ready for the pass there. Evansville again controlling the ball midfield. Shoy getting to Evansville territory. Not really a lot of defensive pressure from this Marquette Warrior team early. Graham Merriweather going over into the corner. Josh Norman intercepting over there. Clearing the ball back towards midfield. And we see Ithier, the forward, trying to get something going back into the neutral territory. Kick to midfield, and it looks like the footing out there is a problem right now. We've seen a lot of Marquette players down on the ground. As we see Shane Smith trying to move in. Again, good defense by the backs from Marquette, clearing the ball out. Matt Brains clearing the ball back to Dave Wolf, the keeper. And for Evansville, it seems like they have controlled the early tempo in this game. Whenever you are able to do that, and we've seen a number of games earlier this year where they have basically dominated, not able to get a lot of scores. Does that really become frustrating if you're out oh, there? Oh, yeah, it's got to be. I, on teams in the past, you know, anytime you just totally dominate a team and you don't score a goal, you're, you're going to get beat or you're going to end up with the tie and you should win. But no, I mean, that's see, happened numerous of times. Merriweather moving in and a good job by Wolf, the keeper coming out, really committed himself early and uh, got up with a key save. Able to get back, and there we see a shot from uh, Kachera. Nico trying to get something in. Again, good defense. Wolf coming out and really committing himself. And offsides. 38 minutes remaining here in the ballgame. A scoreless tie between the University of Evansville and the Marquette Warriors. We'll be back with more first half coverage after this timeout on TV 52. Black Beauty Soccer Field alongside Keith Vonderay from the University of Evansville soccer team. I'm Doug Emig. A scoreless tie between the Aces and Marquette. And while we are away, the first corner kick awarded to Evansville. Good defense by Dave Wolf, the keeper, coming out. And we see Steve Church trying to work his way in. Good defense again by the back Tom Weber for Marquette. Corner not allowing anything to uh, really get Evansville going. The second corner kick now coming in from uh, Steve Church over Steve here in the Church corner. Will take the corner kick. You can kind of get an idea of how the offense is going to set up from our angle here. You can see the ball in the corner. They start moving towards the corner area and look for a header situation. And again, Wolf coming out, getting a quick throw out. Adam Ithier, the forward coming in, and a good job clearing back by Nico Cachera. The overall team spirit, how was it early in the season when everything seemed to be going against the Aces? They had trouble... Uh, Really registering any wins, difficulty finding a starting uh, offense to get going. We had an injury to David early. What was the overall opinion early in the yeah, season? Yeah, I, th I think that was the main problem. We just didn't have a starting lineup. Whereas last year, we had the first team, basically. It was almost the same starting lineup every game. The, the, you know, the, the, the team this year came out and uh, j just wasn't – every game could have been a different lineup. You never knew who was going to start, what have you, and it just caused a lot of problems and practices and what have you. But, but right now, they seem to be doing a lot better. 
And there we see Marquette clearing the ball into their end. Tom Weber trying to find Matt Brains. And there he's got it in the middle and a good shot by Ithier, but a good save by Harrington coming out and doing a good job. You really expect that from Trey. He's been around for a number of years, knows the opportunities when they come, and he seems like a keeper in his junior year. has been successful, especially last year. I think that pretty much got his career going as far as a keeper. But he seems to know exactly what to do, the positions to be in as far as the different offenses are coming in and attacking him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sure Evans was going to have to watch that uh, play right there with Ithier breaking through. I don't think Fred's going to be too happy with our marking right now. We'll have to watch out the rest of the game, shut him down. And it seems like Ithier has been the early one to cause some problems for this Evansville defense. And there we see Corby Smith trying to defend Pat Holton, getting the ball into the throw-in situation, Tom Weber, and a collision. Corby Smith looks like a foul on Evansville, so a throw-in awarded to Evansville. Or actually a free kick here right about midfield. Tom Weber trying to let the offense line up in front of the penalty box area for Evansville and cleared out into the Evansville territory. Steve Church trying to get down and get something going and we see a Marquette player coming over to the sidelines, ankle injury and we talked about not a whole lot of reserves here as far as Marquette. Looks like there's only three. That is Matt Brains, one of the forwards for this Marquette team and with an injury like that, that could provide and you can tell right now, it's the left ankle. He can't even hardly run on it at all. Yeah, it's already taped up as well. Looks like it was already a previous injury. Uh, I mean, they don't look like they're full strength even with 11 people they brought out today. Church trying to find Corby Smith and oh, offsides Evansville. against Evansville. It's a direct kick for the Warriors. Direct kick for Marquette coming out of the penalty box area. Cleared to midfield. And here is Ithier trying to get something going along on the side. Cleared up with Rick Anderson, and again, the defensive backs for Evansville coming up with the key interceptions, and it looked like that shot went off Brain's ankle again. He's kind of knelt down over there, and he's gonna have to come out. He can't even hardly yeah, walk he, on that. He's hurting the team more than he's helping staying out there. He's gonna have to come off. Tom Weber trying to clear the ball. We see Ithier moving in, as well as Chris Leach, and there's an open goal and a shot scored. Adam Ithier, and just as we were talking about yep. Harrington doing a good job, it seemed like a little miscommunication. He came out, Ithier was able to get around and get an open shot on goal. Yeah, I don't know whose man that Ithier was, uh, who's supposed to be marking there. He just broke free, uh, uh, bad pass back there, and he just broke free and uh, just stole one away from us. 32-50 remaining here in the first period. The first goal of the game Marquette going to Marquette. Adam Ithier will be back with more first half coverage here on TV 52 of University of Evansville at the Black Beauty Soccer Field. Doug Emig alongside Keith Vondere. Marquette the first to get on the scoreboard here. 32-50 in the first period. An unassisted goal by Adam Ithier. We talked about his presence coming in. 14 points, six goals, so scoring his seventh on a season. And really just some type of miscommunication, it seemed like, for the Evansville defense. He was left alone. We saw Harrington come out and trade, basically did what he had to do, and uh, just able to get an open shot like that. Once you commit, it seems like you got a trouble getting back that quickly, especially with a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, I don't think you put the blame off on Trey there. I mean, he has to come out to shut down the angle for the, uh, you know, the offensive player with the ball. It's, it's harder for, uh, for the offensive guy with the keeper coming out because you don't have as much angle or much goal to work with when he comes out. You know, it really makes the goal a lot smaller. So he did what he had to do, and uh, Marquette was successful with what they had to do, and they got the one nothing lead right now. And the ball back into the Evansville offensive midfield. Kevin Laughlin going over, trying to clear the ball out and out of bounds, so a throw in awarded to Evansville. Right now, we talked about domination has seemed to be mostly by Evansville, maintaining possession down in their offensive end, just not able to get the quality kicks and shots on goal. Greg Brown, we scored the goal against Loyola, the uh, forward in today's game, along with number 13, Steve Church. And right now, Evansville having a little bit of trouble getting the offense going. Yeah, just as you're saying earlier when you asked me if it had to be frustrating for the team uh, being real dominant, well, that's exactly what's evident right here today. They just come out, quick shot on goal right away, really put the pressure on, and then just, you know, relax, sit down, settle on play, and Marquette puts one in behind him. It's just got to be very frustrating right now for all the aces. And here we see Marquette trying to get something into the offensive end. Weber trying to find Ithier up around midfield, and Evansville intercepting the pass. Graham Merriweather trying to get around towards midfield area, and you can see having trouble with the footing down there again. Steve Church and taken away by Tom Gambanese. 
Throwing the ball to midfield and Nico Cachera maintaining possession. Getting the ball back to John Prohl trying to set something up. About midfield, Jeff Shoy getting something along the outside. The offense is trying to set up for Evansville into their corner, getting over to the shot. Now we see Evansville trying to work something towards the center. Moving the ball in. Church right there in front of the net, but cleared out again. Mark Bowling again moving the ball in. He's got the aces in front of the net, just has to get the ball to him and intercepted by Gambonese again. Some good pressure here by Evansville. And this is where you're really going to make the defense commit themselves. We see a header by Smith, not really too much trouble for the keeper, Wolf. And here we see Brains and Ithier working again. Adam Ithier, number 14, the speedster it looks like on this team. He has come through with the goal so far tonight and working with Brains, the other one. And it doesn't look like he's really injured right now out there on offense. Every time Ithier gets the ball in the middle, he's unmarked. They don't have a man on his back. Fred, I'm sure Fred's not happy with that, as you can see right now, telling uh, the backs what to do here. Somebody's going to have to stay on his back all the time. He's been able to get the ball and turn and go straight to the goal. I'm sure Fred's very unhappy about that right now. Goal kick awarded here to Trey Harrington. And everybody starts farming around midfield area. Good kick past midfield. See Corby Smith battling Marquette Warriors. And here we see Weber again trying to clear the ball into Marquette territory. Greg Brown controlling it along with Shane Schmidt trying to get the ball back to Brown. And right now, John Pro. Whistle is called and foul on uh, Marquette. Pushing on Marquette. Evansville maintains possession. Nico Cachera starting down the field, looking for Steve Church cutting across the middle. Also Corby Smith. Schmidt in there with Weber for Marquette. Marquette just trying to clear the ball back out, not allowing Evansville to get any attempted shots on goal. Matt Brains kicking the ball up past midfield, trying to find Ithier again. And Chris Leach right there for Evansville, clearing the ball out right into Weber, trying to find Ithier again. Leach clearing the ball across midfield. And right now it seems like neither one is able to get any advantage. Yeah, Both defenses coming up. Yeah, play's been kind of sloppy in midfield right now. Here we see Josh Norman on a breakaway on the left corner. Possible shot on goal just wide. And we saw there the defensive backs for Evansville getting back a little bit quicker not allowing maybe an easy shot on goal, much like they did with Ithier once he has gotten in earlier. Entering the match for Evansville. And entering Evansville's lineup, Ian Eggleston, the first opportunity for a substitution here, and we see Saint Shane Schmidt over on the sideline. And I don't know if that's an injury down there. He's just resting right now. They appear to be looking at his left leg. Yeah, that's one where he uh, had turned the ankle earlier in the year. He's got a lot of tape on him. I'm sure they're going to cut him, cut the tape off and uh, give him a new tape job. He's going to get back in the second half. And Evansville trying to control the momentum, dominate the midfield section in the neutral zone. And right now Marquette being rather stingy. Josh Norman over there on the sidelines trying to take the ball away from Evansville. Throw in a ward at Evansville. I think right now what the A's going to have to do is really get the ball to the flanks to uh, Corby Smith and Mar let, the, let them get the ball at their feet and take it right out Mar Marquette's outside backs and see how successful we are with that style of attack. 26 minutes remaining here in the first period. Again, our score one to nothing in favor of the Warriors of Marquette. The goal coming by Adam Ithier, 32-50 and left in the first period. And right now the ball cleared out. Marquette will free receive a free Warriors. kick from the goal mouth. With this time breaking the action, we'll take a timeout here on TV 52. Back with more first half coverage of Evansville Aces soccer right after this timeout. Make alongside. And this is really Arad McCutcheon, isn't it? No, that's the football yeah, stadium. Football, this black beauty right here. Okay. Alongside Keith Vonderay, the uh, red-shirted sophomore from Evansville, writes uh, part of the Evansville soccer team injury. Uh, not able to really participate with the team as far as regular season play, but still, you feel like you're a part of the team. Everybody kind of hangs together when you guys aren't out here actually practicing or playing, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. We're uh, pretty much a team on and off the field. Everybody uh, really pass around together. It's just a good atmosphere here with the team. Again, Evansville trailing one to nothing to the Marquette Warriors. Marquette coming in at six and ten, a member of the Great Midwest Conference, the newly formed Midwest Conference here. Evansville coming in 9-4-2, 5-0-1 in the MCC. They won the regular season title Friday 
with a victory one to nothing over Loyola. And we might mention again, David Weir out of this game picked up his fifth yellow card Friday Loyola. So they are out without the services of Weir today. Greg Brown and Steve Church really acting as the two forwards today. Evansville controlling the ball, crossing midfield, trying to get something going. Leach and Smith. And Corby clearing the ball into the corner. Marquette with the backs coming up, getting the ball, clearing it out, trying to find Ithier again around midfield. Throwing will be awarded to Evansville right in front of us, Chris Leach. And right now it seems like Evansville is just having trouble getting some type of offense going. Not really any one domination. Nobody's really trying to get anything going. Yeah, I'd like to see him at the back uh, when we build from the back. You're just going to have to get the ball to Mark Bowen's feet or Corby Smith's feet. Just let them have a run down the flank at the defender. they got big, tall defenders uh, as well as Corby. They'll, they'll probably go right by him. I'd really like to see him try it. And we saw a good defensive play by Pro taking the ball away from Ithier. Ithier showing the quickness, getting down the sidelines, trying to get something going, and that has been the attack Marquette has taken most of the time. Here we see Evansville trying to get in with something. Ian Eggleston, opportunity there on good defense. Kevin McLaughlin, one of the backs, coming up with a situation. We saw the Wolf come out as the goalkeeper and uh, appeared to be upended a little bit. And there is an injury. He is the one down on the field. Opportunity there for Evansville, just unable to cut through with the uh, shot on goal. Yeah, it was, it was good pressure up front by Ian Eggleston. Uh, it looked like he ran almost uh, the defender from Marquette straight into the goalie, and they collided. Uh, he's up now. I'm sure he'll be all right. Get back in the goal for the defender's corner kick here. The tournament takes place November 7th, 8th, and 10th. And right now, Wolf back up to his feet, trying to, I'm um, sure, make sure that everything's okay. A situation like that, with everybody going full steam, you're going to have collisions like that. And a lot of times, you're not really trying to hurt the other team, but a lot of times you can't help but have collisions like that. Yeah, well, Wolf made the right play, came out. Sometimes, uh, if you see in uh, balls like that, uh, a goal his own, own teammate as well as the other team uh, his player, and uh, that's his own teammate. Uh, seems like he's all right now. It's 22 minutes remaining here in our first period, and again, an opportunity for Evansville. Wolf coming up with another key situation, getting the ball and clearing it back out. Ithier trying to get something going at midfield. Eggleston defending him, and it seems like Evansville's defense has kind of gotten a little bit tougher, exactly what you were talking about. Have somebody stick on Ithier, make sure that he does not break yeah, open like that. Just can't let him turn and run straight towards our goal. And a good opportunity again for Evansville, trying to get something going. We saw Bowen coming in. Also Merriweather and defense again for Marquette coming up with the big interceptions. Goal kick awarded here, David Wolf. And we might mention he is a big customer. Comes in at 6'5", 200 pounds a senior out of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. And height, I guess, is important to a keeper. Yeah, right now you see Marquette, they're not putting much pressure at all on our back, so now it would be a good opportunity to get the ball wide, get it to Mark or Corby wide, and just let them have a run down the flank. It seems like they're being a little bit more easy as far as the offense approach. They're not really attacking as much as they were in the first half. Is this a ploy to really maybe get the defense to switch a little bit for Marquette? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're just not They're not pushing, putting us on any man marking up here in our offensive half of the field, but they're on our backs pretty much do what they want, and right there we gave it up to them, and I think that's what they're wanting us to do. So looks like it's working for Marquette right now. And then we see Ithier trying to find brains again. And again, it appears that that ankle is not really bothering him a whole lot once the opportunity for the offense goes. Uh, he just doesn't want to play defense. He doesn't want to defend, does he? I Tom guess. Weber clearing the ball again, and a good interception here by Evansville. Leach and Corby Smith trying to get the ball, and uh, out of bounds throwing awarded to Marquette. Ball's out of bounds. Throw in for the Warriors. Just over 20 minutes remaining here in the first period. Marquette leading the Evansville Aces one to nothing, and a sliding tackle there. Corby Smith tripping on Evansville. Tripping awarded the uh, kick here, a free kick to the Marquette Warriors. And for Marquette, have to be pleased with the way that they have come out and done a good job defensively against Evansville. For Evansville, kind of frustrating not being able to get anything going offensively. The bad thing about this from a team like Marquette, uh, get, when, if they stick a goal in, it's just like the Dayton game last week. Uh, we're, we're a far better team than Dayton. Here they come in, uh, they score a goal on us, and they start playing with a lot of confidence. And then their play will pick up, and it brings our play down. And we're frustrated, as you said, and it just, it's just hard for the Aces. And then we see a 
penalty on Josh Norman, basically running over Mark Bolin about midfield. So a free kick here awarded to Evansville about midfield. A little over 19 minutes remaining here in the first period. Evansville again trying to get something along the side over there. We see Bolin and also Nico Cachera trying to get something going. Back to Merriweather. Coming up is Jeff Shoy. Finding Greg Brown going over into the corner and a good opportunity here again. A good angle and a good save by Wolf. It was a good opportunity there for the Aces. Mark Bullen uh, whipped that cross in, corner away from the keeper. He had to come out and make a save on it. Steve Church will take the corner kick for him. Corner kick awarded to Evansville their third here in the first period. Steve Church coming over from the corner. Yeah, they're going to have to pull this kick away a little bit. Last three have been, uh, when we have Dave Ward in there, he can give a little pressure in there, but now they're going to have to pull the kick out. So. And almost a header situation from Brown getting the ball towards the middle of the goal. Marquette able to clear the ball back out. We see Kachir again trying to get something into the Evansville area and Wolf coming out again. Nico in midfield clearing the ball back into Evansville territory. Merriweather along with Jeff Shoy again trying to get something along the side over there. Mark Bolin and the Norman for Marquette battling. Evansville coming in clearing the ball again and an easy pickup there for Wolf. Frustration, can you see that with them right now? Oh, you can just see they're not aces out there just to set the ball down, like I said, and get the ball wide. That's what they're going to have to do now with Dave. We're out. When Dave's in, we, we have opportunity to play it in the middle or go wide, but now we're just, I think wide's going to be our best uh, ploy for the afternoon. Good offensive move there by Corby Smith, getting by McLaughlin and uh, trying to get the ball back. Should be awarded a kick from the goal for Marquette. 17 and a half minutes here in our first period remaining. We'll be back with more first half coverage. UV soccer on TV 52 right after this timeout. Back out of Black Beauty Field alongside Keith Vondere. I'm Doug Emig on TV 52. Evansville and Marquette. Marquette getting the first goal coming at 32-50. Adam Ithier. And right now that is our score. Marquette in the lead, one to nothing. Evansville not really being able to get anything. An opportunity while we are away at break for a possible opportunity but uh, just a little bit wide and uh, Marquette coming up with the big key defensive plays again. Steve Provan number 12 for Marquette clearing the ball across midfield trying to find Spatzer. I see, see here Mark takes a run at the bat. Yeah. And kind of ran up the back of Josh Norman. Yeah, with the big defender on Mark there, what they're going to have to do is get the ball right to his feet there. That guy's so big, if they, they try to send the ball in behind Mark, the, the big number seven guy is going to just jump up and head it away. But uh, if they get the ball on Mark's feet, he should be successful in running by him like right here. And again, a good save by Wolf. Speed is such a factor, and it seems like Evansville is being able to use that speed to their advantage, getting the ball out, just not able really to get the quality shots. Yeah, just, just not getting the, the final final touch that they need on goal in here. Uh, seems to be a little better now that these last 10 minutes, but uh, there for a stretch about the middle part of the game, it just looks very sloppy. Mark Bolin in the far side with a corner kick for Evansville. Trying to get it towards the midfield area up into the corner of the box. And again, Steve Church trying to get something going. Marquette again doing a good job cleaning the ball out towards midfield. Spatzig clearing the ball across midfield, finding Ithier. Brains coming over here, a two-on-one. And good job really by Shoy getting back. Opportunity there for Marquette, not able to get something going here. Yeah, Brains had a holder. He would have been off sides there in the pass. So uh, good opportunity for the Aces now, building out of the back. Brains along with Jeff Shoy and a take out there, Tom Webb. And they're going to call the obstruction foul or the foul on Jeff Shoy in Evansville. Yeah, I think with their obstruction, uh, guy came in, kind of ran right in front of Jeff. I don't know if Jeff could have got to the ball or not, but uh, that that's more of a decision call on the ref there. He has caught one way or the other, and he chose for the foul on Shuey. Kevin McLaughlin clearing the ball towards the penalty box area. Good job, Evansville, clearing the ball back out. Corby Smith trying to get something going back to Leach. Headed back into Marquette territory. Graham Merriweather and also Weber and offsides called against Marquette. Marquette. 13 and a half minutes here remaining in the first period. Marquette again leading one to nothing. 
TV52's continuing coverage of University of Soccer continues. Doug Emig along with Keith Vondere, the uh, University of Evansville soccer red shirt this year uh, out of Wrights High School. And Evansville again trying to get something going. We see Smith into the penalty box area. Working down there with Steve Church and Evansville not able to get a lot going. Penalty on Weber, so a free kick awarded here to Evansville. Yeah, you know, on free kicks like these here, this is where we miss Dave, where even if we're not going to get the ball to Dave, he, he's such a big object, a big target in there, he's going to draw three or four men to him and it's going to free up other players. But right now with him not in, everybody else is going to get man marked and it's uh, a lot harder to, 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 to really uh, m make this kick work here. And I'm sure that the opponents are aware of his presence out there, even though you do not go directly to David on sometimes. Yeah. They're going to have three or four guys yeah, around. Exactly. Yeah, so he's going to free other guys up. Right. And then we see Merriweather trying to get something in, cleared back out by Marquette. Eggleston in there, almost a handball situation. Marquette again clearing the ball out. Norman trying to get something going for Marquette, clearing the ball to midfield. Corby Smith stepping in, trying to get something going. Weber over here to Brains, back to Weber. Clearing the ball to midfield, looking for Ithier and uh, had to really hang back for an offsides penalty so it would not be called. Evansville again controlling the majority of the possession, just not able really to get the offense going. And, yeah. Um, yeah, right now Marquette, seems, their uh, strategy seems to be working. They're just laying off right here. Their backs are, their forwards put no pressure on our backs here and they're just waiting for us to get the ball up to them. We need to get the ball to Mark or Corby's feet, like I've said it probably about four or five times now and just run straight at him. I, I wish they'd just really try that. Right here. But it's also easier sitting up here. Oh, yeah, that too, it's, it's a lot easier up here. It's almost too easy up here. Sometimes uh, we don't think about that. We have a lot of different ideas and suggestions, but really being down there is a totally different thing, and sometimes, yeah, obviously, you, yeah. you can't exactly do what we want them to do. Yeah, we have the best seat in the house up here. You see everybody. I know they can't see everyone out there. And then we see Church over there trying to get something going into the corner. And... Uh, out of bounds against Evansville, so a free kick awarded to Marquette coming out of the goal. Another substitution for University of Evansville. Jerry, Jeremy Matthews, a freshman out of Memorial, getting his first opportunity Evansville coming in. For Evansville is Jeremy Pugh. Coming in for Ian Eggleston, who was a earlier substitute for the Aces. So Jeremy getting an opportunity to play here. Yeah, with David out, it looks like Fred's trying to find a good uh, running partner up front with Steve Church. He's going to try a uh, short sure afternoon until he gets gets the right click in there up front. And does that really hurt an offensive strategy coming in? You know you're not going to have David for this game. Does everybody kind of pick up the tempo a little bit and try to make up for his loss? Yeah, it would have been different if uh, we'd have lost him on Friday and we'd have had a game next Friday. Then we'd have a whole week to prepare for it with just one day. And, and we had a hard game Friday night, so we're not going to have a practice on Saturday. And, and really, it's just going to have to come out here today and see how, how it worked. And uh, right now, down one well, nothing, it's not working as uh, Fred anticipated, I'm sure. But uh, I, I think they're really going to settle down now, come out in the second half, uh, with a ball of fire just as they can uh, Dayton and I'm sure they're going to really pick it up in that second half and the last 10 minutes to go here I wouldn't be surprised if we stick one in under 10 minutes and Evansville trying to clear something again towards the goal zone area we saw Chris Leach trying to get the ball and here is it here again good defense there John Pro taking the ball away and that's something that Evansville really was not doing earlier allowing Ithier to get those breakaway shots. Yeah, but the bad thing is it's the wrong man coming up on him. Uh, Pro is our last man back, so you want him free. You really don't want him man marking somebody. You're going to have to somebody from the midfield to stay with him or one of the backs are going to have to stay with him besides John Pro. And tripping on McLaughlin over on the side. Evansville trying to get something going again. Tripping on the Warriors. And bringing uh, some booze from across the crowd seems like every game we're out here, we're on this side. This is the quiet side. All the ruckus and everything is on the other side. Yeah, that's where, that's the student section over there. They get pretty rowdy at these games. You got big Sasha Hoopman over there yelling it up over there. And the, all the all the creatures over there and sitting out, come out here for a good game. Get a lot of heckling in. Evansville with free kick. 9.40 or 8.45 remaining here in the first period. And Evansville again awarded a, a corner kick area over here. 
Mark Bolin with, Mark the, Bolin with the, the corner kick. And Evansville has not really been able to take an opportunity here to take advantage of these corner kicks. Yeah, they're, they're really going to have to pull this kick away from the keeper on the last four keepers came out and slapped them away. They're going to have to pull this out, look for a John Pro maybe or Jeff Shoy. And into the lineup for Marquette as Evansville tries to get something going. Good opportunity there again. Jeremy Matthews with a kick and defense for Marquette coming up with a quality kick out, clearing the ball back out. Shoy again trying to find Corby Smith down in the corner, trying to get the ball centered towards the uh, goal area. In for uh, Marquette, number 18, Tyler Zisk, 6'170 170-pound sophomore out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And another corner kick awarded here Steve for Church Evansville. Steve Church Evansville. from this corner. It seems, is that the way they usually set it up? One takes one side and one the other? Yeah, usually Mark has a better service with the ball swinging out away from the keeper. And this one, you're going to curl it in. See that curls in towards him. And again, another opportunity for Evansville maybe to pick up a header situation. John Prohl in front of the net there, but unable to get anything. Steve Church in front of us with the throw in. Finding Greg Brown and uh, Marquette able to take the ball away. Ithier working with Steve Provan. Also Rick Anderson and a good slide in by Brown taking the ball away and a little altercation here between Brown and Anderson. And Tom Dragon, the referee, stops play and makes sure that everybody keeps a cool head out there. And we have seen that a lot from the officials this year, as high school level as well as the collegiate level. When the referee stops play like that, more times than not, he gets them together. He's going to try to calm things down a little bit. As a player, do you listen to the referee in that situation, or are you just so mad or frustrated that you're going to listen to him but not pay any attention to him? Well, I, I think most players, are gonna ha they're going to have to listen to him. Whether first or they're going to get carded, they're going to be oh, out like Dave yeah. is. Or, uh, but I, I think most of the time, uh, most players will, will you know, hear what he has to say and you know, get, just you know, calm down out there and uh, j just get back to playing. Church with the throw in and Marquette taking the ball away. Graham Merriweather working with Smith, trying to get something going. And Marquette clearing the ball back out. McLaughlin trying to get the ball to Ithier again. Tyler Ziss, the late replacement, clearing the ball back out. It's going to be a warrior to throw in. Tom Weber, it's midfield to Rick Anderson. And the Evansville defense, again, trying to get something going. Offsides again against Marquette. Offsides Marquette. And that's something that you see, or we've seen a lot this year here on TV 52, the opponents coming in, a lot of offside calls. When you look at Evansville, not a whole lot. What? Why is that? we got to give a lot of credit to John Pro there. He's uh, pulling the offside trap on a very smart player. He's just going to step up right for sees the ball played. And, and just like that time, the Marquette attacker is going to be right right behind him in his offside position. So uh, you got to give a lot of credit to John Pro. I'm sure Trey Harrington's back there talking to him as well, telling him what to do. Corey Smith with the interception, clearing the ball past midfield, back to Chris Leach. And Leach looking up ahead, seeing Harding to set up. Just kind of flying with the ball, trying to center towards midfield. Has got Matthews over there, trying to beat the defender. Wolf, the keeper, coming out. And the keeper basically has done a good job for Marquette. Come in and really, once he's had to commit himself early, it seems like he has come up with the big saves. Yeah, he's been very confident. Even after taking that spill uh, early in the first half there, he's still come out in all the corners, slapped him away, hit him away, caught him, what have you. He's done a good job in the net so far today. Four and a half minutes remain here in our first period. Marquette continues to lead one to nothing. And Zisk, a player trying to break in and get an opportunity for a shot on goal. Harrington comes up with a save, and it almost appeared that like that could have been an offsides against Marquette. Well, I think he said on, uh, just as I was saying, you got to give credit to John Pro. Uh, the other backs have to listen to him. When, he, when John Pro says push up and he commits himself up, the other guys have to go with him. If they don't go, well, the well, then, then the trap's going to fall apart. Just right there, he had a little word with uh, Chris Leach and Josh Shoy, and I'm sure he's going to tell him, you know, hey, fellas, listen to me. You know, I'm going to push it all. J you know, just stick with me. And I think that as well as any other sport, especially on such a big field, like this soccer field, communication is such a key. If you've got somebody out there that is constantly talking, letting everybody know what the situation is, who's got what type of man and what type of defense coverage you're going to have. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what the uh, Aces have out there with uh, Pro e and uh, Graham Merriweather in there in the midfield. Opportunity here for Evansville. We see Church trying to get the ball over to Bolin and intercepted by Marquette, trying to clear the ball towards midfield. 
again, and also Weber trying to get it into the offensive end for Marquette. Not really a whole lot of offensive tax here by Marquette in the last five or six minutes, it seems like. With that goal coming, they have really relaxed a little bit. Ithier not quite as quick and trying to get the passes to him as they were earlier today. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure they're going to be pleased with that going in the half with the one nothing lead here. Uh, they're just going on, and you know, I'm sure they're going to try to defend a little more in the second half to keep, try to keep that lead. Church over in the corner trying to clear it towards the middle of the goal area again cleared out by McLaughlin. So a corner kick again awarded to Evansville. One nothing our score just under three minutes here in the first period. Marquette leading the University of Evansville Aces. Evansville coming off a big win Friday evening over Loyola, clinching the MCC regular season, which results in an automatic buy in the first round for the MCC tournament up in Indianapolis. And everyone knows the winner of that tournament receives an automatic bid. This week, Evansville rank number three as far as the Great Lakes region, and usually they take the top two teams if you do not receive an automatic bid. And here's an opportunity, quick on goal, Bolin trying to get something going, and again, cleared out by the Marquette defense. See that time, Mark had a lot of space between him and the goal, and uh, we got the ball to his feet and had a good run at him, and we get a corner kick. We're going to have to have more of that in the second half. I'm sure that's what Fred's going to say at halftime. Uh, if you remember the early games, the Tulsa game, St. Louis game, what have you, he's been really effective when he gets the ball to his feet, and that's what they're going to have to come out and do. And it seems like he uses his quickness so much to his advantage. Once he gets rolling like that, he knows the angle and the opportunity to take it. There for a header, we saw Pro getting the ball, bringing it back out, Marquette clearing the ball. Approaching midfield, trying to find Ithier again. Nico Kachera back there, clearing the ball back to Trey at goal. A minute and a half remaining here in the first period. And Harrington again, cross midfield, a good header by Matthews and a shot there we and go. a goal. Opportunity there and you take advantage of it. Steve Church continues his offensive threat as he much the last three or four weeks, especially the last couple games where he has come through with some big opportunities. And that was kind of a freaky situation. We saw the ball cleared, and he was, I guess, at the right place at the right time. Yeah, I got to give a lot of credit to Trent Harrington there on the, the punish. His kicks were a bit dodgy on Friday night. He gets a good kick, a hold of that one. Uh, Jeremy Matthews gets up first on the header, flicks it on. Church, he just puts it away from home. Harrington and Jeremy Matthews. Good goal. It's going to be good going in the half for the Aces. Big opportunity there, and Evansville came through. I'm sure that uh, that will make it a little bit easier at halftime, knowing instead of going in one to nothing and having the frustration of the domination that you've had most of the first half, at least having a tie. Yeah, it's going to make it a lot easier on us and a lot harder on Marquette now. I'm sure their coach isn't going to be too happy. Uh, they're just trying to hold on there, and uh, I'm sure if they would have kept on attacking and put a little more pressure on us, it might not have happened. Uh, they just let, let us play the ball back to Trey and uh, kick header and goal, so uh, I don't think Marquette's going to be too happy right now. Under a minute remaining here in our first half. Tie score between Evansville and Marquette, and it looks like Evansville is going to be rather tent just uh, going into the locker room at halftime tied. Not really any type of offensive attack right here. Play, basically playing a passing game in the Marquette backfield. And clock ticking down under 30 seconds. Give another kick here, see if we another goal on the punt. How <laughs> times does that happen that you see a keeper like that get an assist. Oh, I'm, I think Trey has maybe uh, three or four now. I remember uh, last year in the MCC against Dayton, uh, he punted. We had like, three headers in a row and a goal in that uh, big overtime win we had against Dayton. So it, it happens uh, more than what you, I'm sure you'd think, but it's, uh, I mean, it's not an every, every game situation. First half has expired here. One to one, a tie ball game. Marquette getting on the scoreboard first, 32-50. Adam Ithier unassisted. And then with 126 remaining here in the first period, Steve Church with the assist to Jeremy Matthews and Trey Harrington tying the score at one. We'll be back for some halftime festivities and stay tuned. More second half coverage of Evansville soccer coming up next on TV 52. We're tied at one to one, University of Evansville and Marquette. And with me, the uh, coach of the Memorial Tigers, Champions of the Evansville sectional number three and a big win we saw earlier today, one to nothing over Castle. Yeah, we're excited. You know, it was a tough game and uh, Castle's a really good team, so we're happy we can get by them and go on in the tournament. You guys have had an outstanding season all season long and you really look as far as the soccer here in Evansville, just a great 
tributation this year. You've got four teams as far as the top 20 is concerned. You're number two this week. Castle number five. Wrights we're going to see tomorrow night against Modern Day. They're ranked number nine. And then you've also got Harrison. The soccer program in Evansville has really been on the up and up. Yeah, I think so, and I think the, the those four teams, you know, it's nice to have them all ranked, and I think we could have more teams ranked. Uh, as more of our Evansville teams get up to the different teams, I think you'll see that more of our teams will get ranked, but yeah, it, it is nice to have four from Evansville ranked. You guys, uh, not really a stellar performance like you had last year, uh, three times the state defending champions. How was your guys really preparing for this year? Were you looking to go for a number four already in a row or just take a one game at a time? Well, we knew when we lost nine seniors that we'd have some inexperience and, and we knew we'd have some tough times and we just worked through those and uh, I think we're coming into our game right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I think if you'd ask all our players, the state championship was one of their goals. So. Uh, we just took a little bit longer to polish up uh, than we did last year. Successful program. It seems like Memorial is always successful in soccer. Is there one really attribute that you can do that? You can look at that and say this is the reason why, or is it just a number of things? Well, I think the early success of our program. In, in our third year, we won a state championship, and uh, I think that probably got the younger kids enthused about it. And you know, if you keep having young kids come into your program, they're good players already, and, and then our program can help them be a little bit better, uh, then you can each, each year have a good team. So I think probably the early success got everybody enthused about it, and, and that's continued. Big win last night, as we saw later, or earlier today here on TV 52, one to nothing over Castle. Good luck next week, and hopefully uh, at least one of the Evansville teams will be able to continue the tradition. Yeah, we hope so, and we hope it's us. We'll be back with second half coverage of Evansville soccer against Marquette. Score tied 1-1 here at halftime. Stay tuned The second half coverage coming up next after this timeout. Alongside Keith Vondere, I'm Doug Emig. Halftime score 1-1. Marquette scoring first. 32-50 into the ball game. Adam Ithier unassisted. Marquette taking a 1-0 lead. And then just before halftime, 126 remaining. Steve Church with kind of a weird type of goal. Assist to uh, Jeremy Matthews and also the keeper, Trey Harrington. As far as shots on goal the first half, Evansville had seven, Marquette four. Corner kicks way in advantage to Evansville, nine to zero. One save apiece for the keepers, Wolf and Harrington. And fouls, five for Evansville, eight for Marquette. Halftime. What do you think Coach Smaltz was talking about? Uh, I think he's got to be a little more pleased now uh, with that goal in the last two minutes there uh, than it probably would have been a pretty much a lashing in there, I'm sure. Uh, I think he's going to, you know, I think he's going to say the same stuff I said. He's going to have to get the ball to Mark and Corby's feet and just, you know, have, let them have a run down the down at these fullbacks. You look at number seven, he's a big, tall guy. You want to get the ball to Mark's feet. You don't want to put it up in the air for him because he's so small he's going to get knocked around. But uh, he can pretty much run around about anybody in the country right now the way he's been playing. So uh, we'll just see how they come out the second half. They should have a lot more confidence now going in with that goal right before halftime. I'm sure that uh, if that goal had not came, that uh, major frustration would have been a key, and I'm sure that uh, Coach Smaltz would have been rather upset with the opportunities that they might have had that really could not take advantage of. Not only that, it would have, would have kept Marquette with a lot more confidence. Uh, now I'm sure their confidence has to be shook a little bit uh, with just a tie again. Just pretty much starting the second half over 0-0 again. Switch ends and are on opposite goals here. Evansville scoring, as we mentioned, going in at halftime, 126, Steve Church. And uh, issue uh, whistle here and a Marquette player down. And it appears that uh, Brains, who was kind of injured, we thought, off and on during the first half, is not even starting here in the second half. So uh, that ankle, once you get into the locker room, it might tighten up a little bit and not be able to come out as far as the second half play. Yeah, I'm sure you got a new tape job on that one. Uh, so he's trying to warm up, come in. Uh, just as we said, they only came in with uh, 13 or 14 guys. I think 13 field players uh, they have two keepers, I'm sure. Uh, they're just hurting for players right now. Nico Kachira trying to clear the ball to midfield. Norman has appeared to be a very good defensive player, midfielder, causing a lot of problems for Evansville in the first period because of his size and really the quickness. We see Spatsik over there trying to clear the ball over into Marquette territory, back towards midfield. And Marquette coming out, controlling early, something we didn't see a whole lot of in that first period. Shot on goal there by Norman. A rather easy pickup for Harrington. I thought I heard him yell keeper on the back pass there. <laughs> almost, I don't know, kind of a weak shot there. But just as you said, it looks a lot easier up here than it does down there. 
I'm sure he wasn't trying to shoot it like that. But. Nico getting the ball over to Jeremy Matthews, finding Trey, or uh, Graham Merriweather, trying to get something going and out of bounds. Will be awarded to Evansville again. And we mentioned corner kicks, nine for Evansville in the first half, none for the Marquette Warriors. We'll I'm sure something's gonna have to give here pretty soon on all these corner kicks. You just don't have that many in the game and not get a good shot or a goal or something. I, I really think something's gonna come from the corner kick here in the second half. Mark Bullen from the side over here, basically the same type from the other side. Earlier we saw in the first half working with Steve Church. Bullen again trying to clear something just behind the goal mound. He just didn't wrap around it like he wanted to. They're at, uh, I like that play there. Uh, they've been on the first nine ones. I think in the, in the first half they uh, put them off in the air and uh, Wolf was pretty successful coming out and knocked them away. Without Dave, we're in there. Uh, as we say, you freeze up a lot of players. We were just getting knocked around. Uh, they're just trying to do a short one there, pull it out, and then get the cross and get some more movement in there. But uh, Mark just didn't wrap around it like he wanted to. I'm sure he's not happy with that play there. Goal kick awarded here and a free kick. We see Marquette trying to get something going at midfield. Again, Adam Ithier, number 14, has been the big guy season long as far as points. He scored their first goal here. The only goal here for Marquette this afternoon, his seventh on the season. Marquette on the scoreboard first. Evansville tying it up right before halftime. And we're just underway into the second period, just about three minutes in. Evansville again trying to get something going offensively. They controlled, dominated basically most of the first half offensively. It seemed like Marquette was unable to get anything going. They were concentrating mainly on defense, stopping this Evansville offense. From midfield, Marquette trying to get the ball down into the goal mouth area. We see Merriweather clearing the ball out. Church along with Matthews and offsides on Evansville. Yeah, looks like that's what we call it. I don't I don't know if uh, Jeremy was trying to actually pass that ball to Churchy. I think he was trying to head it to himself there, and uh, I guess uh, uh, the line referee had to make the call, you know, what he saw there, so uh, he can't read the player's mind, so he just did his job there. But from what it looked like, Jeremy was just trying to hit it to himself rather than pass it to somebody else, so in that case, he would have been onside. 41 minutes to go here in the ball game. Again, a score tied at one apiece, Marquette and University of Evansville. U of E soccer coverage continues here on TV 52. One more game remaining with uh, home team as far as Evansville is concerned. Akron will be coming to town November 3rd and a possible breakaway here. Bowling for Evansville using the speed and uh, just getting, I think, too far down before he got a chance to get the ball off. He's just not happy with himself right now. He's got his head down. Just need to pick his play up a little bit, pick his head up. Uh, you know, he's getting the ball how we want now. We want the ball to his feet there. He's just going to have to start converting here. Free kick award here for Marquette again from the goal mouth area trying to get something across midfield. Again, Evansville doing a good job intercepting Jeff Shoy, getting it into Evansville territory. Back and forth with Ithier. Marquette maintaining possession again. Norman cutting down. Back to the middle, finding Jay Spatzik. And this is Ithier breaking in. Chris Leach over there defensively trying to stop something. And it uh, looks like the first corner kick awarded here for Marquette. To the Warriors. Adam Ithier will take the corner kick. And didn't waste any time. They got that right out. Not a typical corner kick that you usually see. Yeah, but uh, sometimes it can work for you, though. Uh, Evans was just now trying to get back on defense. And Ithier puts the ball down quick, knocks it back. And uh, could have caught Evansville napping there, but lucky for us, it uh, wasn't too much of a quality service into the box. 39 and a half minutes, we'll take a break here. More Aces Soccer continues on TV 52 right after this timeout. One of the Aces soccer teammates, one of the red shirts this year, and a sophomore out of Wrights High School, not really able to get anything going this year, Keith Vondere. I'm Doug Emmick. Aces soccer continues a tie ball game so far. Marquette and Evansville taking on the Aces here at Black Beauty Field. Marquette getting on the scoreboard first in the first period. Getting a goal at 34-50. 32-50, Adam Ithier. Marquette took the lead one to nothing, and then 126 remaining in the first period. Steve Church with a goal for Evansville, and we talked about it. Church has really come on, picking up his eighth or sixth goal of the season, total of 14 points now, and has really done a good job the past three or four games for Evansville. Evansville on the break now, trying to get something on the other far side. Corby Smith battling one of the Marquette defenders, Steve Proven, and again a uh, 
Looks like a holding penalty called against Evansville. Yeah, I think Corby uh, was arguing for that he got fouled from behind there, and then he did a little retaliation, and uh, you're always going to get caught. It's always the second man that does it. It's always when he get, gets caught in any sport, uh, and that's just what happened there. 37 minutes remaining here. We see Steve Church just uh, trying to get something going. Uh, we talked about the frustration Evansville had in the first period. Finally got some offense going under two minutes in the first half before they got the first goal. And uh, Josh Norman, number seven there, has been a thorn for Evansville as well as Adam Ithier and offsides again called against Marquette. Yeah, yeah the bad thing about Ithier, he's, he's such a good player offensively, but he doesn't want to get back on defense at all. That's why, uh, I think that's part of the reason why our defenders are losing him, because uh, everybody else is involved in the, you know, when we're attacking, he's just standing up there all alone, and uh, that time from Marquette, he heard him just standing up there. He's probably 10, 12 yards off sides. Kind of a snowbird like in basketball. Offense. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Big, tall center that can't get back on the defense, run the floor very well. But uh, in that case, I'm sure he's going to hurt him more than he's going to help him. Evans with a free kick, trying to get something going down in their end. Mark Bolin battling Norman. Good takeaway by Mark. And again, working the ball to the outside where it seems like Evansville has been most dangerous. Jeremy Matthews over in the corner trying to generate some offense. Cleared out by Marquette. A corner kick, I believe, will be awarded or a throw in to Evansville. Shane Schmidt, who uh, exited the first half, and we can see he got a new tape job, so is back in for the second half here with the throw in, trying to find somebody in the middle, and a good job again by the keeper, Dave Wolf, big six foot five, 200 pounder, coming out and has done a real good job on the shots that Evansville has been able to get off. Yeah, he's been very good back there in that today. He's, uh, he's kind of wiry. He's always a uh, loose, very active goalie back there. I'm sure he's going to be, uh, I'm sure he's kind of scareful to some of the opposing players in games uh, before, but uh, looks like Evansville's adjusted to his style of play today. Again, Marquette being able to control a little bit more here in the second half at the midfield than they were in the first half. We saw Provan, and now we see Schmidt coming in trying to take the ball away. Mark Bolin. Steve Church up in front, and we see Nico Kachira coming along the side here. Bowling trying to find something in the middle, and good defense again by Marquette coming up with a key interception. Clearing the ball and looking for Ithier again. Two defenders back there this time, and John Pro and Chris Leach. And Ithier trying to use his quickness and his mobility to get something going out of bounds. That's good in the first half on a ball like that. They're bringing him in anybody. I mean, uh, it seems like, uh, I'm sure Fred told him, you know, watch him. He's got some wheels. So now, now our backs are looking for him. They know where he's at and uh, shut him down pretty good there. And I think probably because he plays back so much is not so much concerned with defense that Evansville was not quite aware of that maybe in the first half. They saw it and made the transition, made the really connection that they needed to do to absolve that. Yeah, I know uh, when we attack, we try to get everybody in the play. And when you're attacking, you're not going to worry about defending. And that's just what they did in the first half with Ithier. Ithier again, shot on goal. Big come uh, save right there from Harrington. And really the shots on goal have not been that many. Uh, Marquette had four in the first half, Evansville seven. And you really expect more shots on goal, especially from the Evansville ball club. Yeah, with nine corner kicks, we need to get more shots than just seven. Uh, I know uh, probably didn't get even uh, half as many shots off uh, as we had the corner kicks because uh, Wolf came out and knocked a lot of them away. But it seems like this half, we seem to slow it down a little bit on the corner, take more time, and uh, pull the ball out a little bit. Goal kick award here to Harrington and clearing the ball past midfield. And there we see Norman trying to get something for Marquette again along with Spatzer. Ball out of bounds. Throw in awarded to Evansville. Nico looking in the middle, finding Jeremy Matthews and taken away by Pat Horton. Oh, and a breakaway for Church. And what were you going to say? Oh, uh, I was, was going to say the linesman had the flag up there, but he couldn't be off sides because uh, Marquette's the team that passed it back. And uh, that's, you know, you can't be off sides if the other team's going to give the ball to you back there no matter how far you are back. And uh, uh, the center official there waved it off. He uh, knows the rules pretty good and just waved it off. And the corner kick award here again to Evansville, the second of this half, number of 11 for the game. And like you said, I think it's just a matter of time. It was kind of like the uh, game we had last week. You know something's going to have to happen if you get that many opportunities. There was a little better try instead of just dumped it far back where Wolf just came out clearly. Chipped it, uh, you know, cut a little short to the post. Uh, it looked like Churchy might have been able to flick that one in the middle and where, but he tried the shot going for the goal. It was a little better try there by the Aces. 
Marquette with the free kick. Kabatsi uh, clearing the ball out, trying to get something over midfield. Spatsik battling Kachera there. And good interception by Evansville at midfield. Again, trying to clear something. We've got Church, also Mark Bolin down there, and a good takeaway by Marquette. Trying to clear the ball out, Kevin McLaughlin, and uh, should be awarded a throw in here to Marquette. Yeah, I think Fred was happy with that pressure there. You don't want to let it out from the back. That's what we try to do. Marquette lets us do that. I really don't agree with that. We try to keep constant pressure up front and, and you know take the ball away from them. That's where a lot of our offense comes from, just picking balls up from the other team's fullbacks. Hithian trying to get the ball to Norman, intercepted there by Kachera, and clearing the ball back down towards Evansville's offensive end, McLaughlin, and a good header. And offsides again awarded. Marquette not agreeing with the call for them. The sidelines Marquette. coaching staff up on their feet, but uh, no such luck. Jerry Panic is the coach for Marquette, and we mentioned in the top of the telecast win number 300 here for Coach Fred Smaltz. Should he be able to pick up this win here? And uh, I'm sure the kids have got that on their mind. Maybe not so much now as they're into the ball game as they did maybe before the game started. Yeah, I don't think they're thinking uh, 300 right now, but I'm sure when the game starts, everybody's going to be happy that if, if we get that win today. But uh, if we lose, you know, it's going to be another L on five L's this season. That's kind of a lot, I'm sure, uh, right now they're just playing the game harder than after the game. There's some celebration if we get that victory for Fred. And Evans, what we talked, has kind of gotten things Things going their way once again after a slow start. They are 7-1-1 one, one in their last nine games, ranked number 23 this week. Regular season champions as far as the MCC will receive the first round automatic buy in the MCC tournament. And of course the uh, winner of the MCC tournament receives an automatic bid to the NC2A. Something I'm sure that is on the back of their minds right now is to continue this tradition out here after such a rocky start to come through with some big quality wins over some big teams like they have this year. Yeah, exactly right. They've uh, really picked it up now in the season. Like I said, it seems like they have a lineup now. Probably before lineup was changing uh, yeah, every game. And it looks like maybe a tripping call against Evansville. Yeah, going back to that about the the play now, even if even if that your starting lineup's not playing as good as you know, uh, someone says, oh well, he shouldn't be here, but well, at least you just have a first team though. You have a, a unit that's going to play together, practice together. It's just a lot lot easier for the, for fellows, you know, to know what they're going to do and where people are going to be. So I think that has to do a lot with it, with the turnaround. Uh, but you know, we played some tough teams: South Carolina, Portland. Uh, we we lost to pretty quality teams. Well, you look at the success that you guys had last year, and there's really no way that you're going to be able to double that. I mean, with the people that you lost to graduation and you've got so many new people coming in, Fred has given a number of the freshmen an opportunity, especially early in the season, to get some starts trying to generate some type of really team goal out there. Yeah, I think the thing we realized, we, you know, of course, we missed Scott Cannon and Tim Marsh, you know, big guys like that. But then, then you know, we missed the Jeff Rainbow, it's the Ron Croys, Paul Nevins, you know, a lot of role players on the team that, you know, right now some young guys really can't come in and fill that role right away. But, you know, they've settled down a lot now and the play's turned around. Under 29 minutes here remaining in the game, a tie is scored. Marquette and Evansville 1-1. Marquette getting on the uh, scoreboard first, and there we see a foul, I believe, on Marquette. Gamonies on the defensive backs just kind of pushed and shoved Jeremy Matthews out of the way, and uh, it's going to be a free kick here awarded to Evansville. Yeah, they're going to play this one, I'm sure, just like a corner. Want to keep this ball away from Wolf. He's been, uh, been able to come out and get about everything we put in the box there. So you might look for me to, to drop it really short or to either put it real far beyond here. Murrayweather and Bolin. And Graham getting the kickoff, looking oh. for something in the middle. Opportunity there again and just uh, miscommunication. They're not able to get something. And a good opportunity there again for a kind of circus kick by Steve Church just over the uh, crossbar. 28 minutes here to go in the ball game. We'll be back on TV 52 with more second half coverage of Evansville soccer right after this timeout. Side Keith Vondere, I'm Doug Emig. TV 52 Sports continues their coverage of University of Evansville soccer today. The Aces taking on the Warriors of Marquette. Our score tied at one apiece. Marquette getting on the scoreboard first. Both goals coming in the first period. Marquette at 32-50. Adam Ithier. Steve Church scoring for Evansville with 126 remaining in the first half to tie the score at one. And really, 
no domination from either ball club here in the second period. Evansville coming out and basically controlling the momentum, majority of the possession time down in their uh, end of the situation, and uh, Dr. Davis takes a shot into the side. I don't know if Marcus meant to do that one. I think he might take, <laughs> take some credit after the game and say he tried to. I don't know about that. I wonder if he could do it again. That's what you call in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> And usually the uh, linesmen or the lines judge are not going to run into too many situations where they're going to have a possibility of getting the ball kicked at them or running into uh, players much like the referee does. Yeah, the, last night at the high school games I saw in the Memorial game, uh, I think it was a Castle player tried to curve the ball down the end line and hit the lines here in the back of the head and would have stayed in play to his player running down the field. I don't think he was too happy about that. But uh, but the referee is, you know, they're part of the field. It hits them and just, you know, got to play on like it took a bad bounce. And uh, so that's what happened right there. Evansville again trying to get the momentum going their way. 25 and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. And for Evansville, basically controlling the momentum. The offense has been there, just not really quality shots and uh, miscommunication sometimes. There's a shot oh. and a goal. Just when you think that they're trying to set something up, wow, 25-11. And Evansville has taken a two to one lead. Just a great goal by Corey Smith right there. Turned the defender, flicked it up over his leg and just had a hard angle for a goal to defend there and just put it right in the net. Great, great shot, great goal. And it appeared like usually those situations you're going to look for a centering pass when he's over in that, not so much that the angle is there for a corner kick or a shot on goal like that. Yeah, you really can't fault the keeper there. I mean, that you know, you, you don't fault keepers. You applaud uh, goal scorers there, and that is just a great goal. 25 minutes remaining here in the ball game. Evansville has taken a 2 to nothing or 2-1 to one lead. We'll be back with more University of Evansville soccer after this timeout on TV 52. Coming at 25-11 remaining in the ballgame. Corby Smith picking up his first goal of the 1991 season, giving Evansville a 2-1 to one lead over the Marquette Warriors. Back on TV 52 with U of E Soccer, I'm Doug Emig alongside Keith Vonderay, a redshirt sophomore this year for the University of Evansville soccer team. And we were talking kind of away from the break. Really some uh, unlikely heroes here this afternoon. Yeah, you got uh, Jeremy Matthews comes in uh, about the last 11 minutes of the game there, flicks on the header in the first half, and uh, you know, get the time you go in there. Corby Smith with just a great individual effort, flicks the ball up, takes a just unbelievable shot. Nobody in the park, I'm sure, is expecting it to happen, but Corby, you know, he just has that feeling and put it in. So we had some unlikely heroes today, but you know, that's what you need in a day like this. You got your, your main gun, David Ware out, and you know, you got Graham Weather who's playing hard every game, and guys like that are going to have a man on them every game. You need people like that to step up and meet the challenge. Nico going down the field trying to find Mark Boland over in the corner and Norman sticking on him like glue, forcing the ball out of bounds and should be awarded here to Evansville. And we see Shane Smith coming over for the throw in. And again, Evansville being able to dominate most of the first half offensively and really control the tempo and much of the same here in the second period. If you're Marquette, you're down a goal now. Do you really change your type of the way you approach the game, you really came in, I think, defensively. Well, yeah, they're, if they want to win here, they're going to have to be, you know, they're going to have to change something. It's obviously not working. You're getting beat 2-1. Something's not working. I think a lot of that is, as you said, trying to defend. And a good opportunity there. We saw Shane Smith corner kick area over there trying to center the ball, and Marquette able to come up with some defense there. Church trying to get something again and going off an Evansville player. Marquette getting the ball back here. Kevin McLaughlin along the side down here trying to find Ithian. And it seems like every time the ball is in their end, look for Ian Ithian to be, or Adam Ithian to be a part of that. And as we said earlier, he is not really concerned a whole lot with his defensive play. He's kind of lays back and makes sure that if there is an offensive type of threat that he's going to be one of the first ones down there. Yeah, even just, just right there, he just saw he just kind of stayed and let Graham pretty much do what he wanted there. Uh, I know on our team, Fred likes our forwards. Uh, Steve Church, you know, tells him before the game, look, Church, here's your go. Pick the ball at the defender, you know, three or four times this game. And I, I, I really like that style of play. A lot of high, that's how, like I said earlier, that's how we get a lot of our offense from just taking balls away from the defense. But if there seems to be, oh, you know, don't use the word lazy. That's kind of a harsh word, but that's kind of the way he's played here this afternoon. Merriweather trying to find something up the middle and a good pickup there again by Wolf. The keeper had Jeremy Matthews coming in for a possible 
shot on goal before Wolf came up with a big pickup. And Marquette again trying to get the ball over midfield. McLaughlin, the Ithian circling back around. And good interception there by Boland. Evansville creating a good defensive havoc for this Marquette team. Even though they are not real offensive minded, they have done a good job to shut them down. We see Matthews and Norman here battling. And one of the officials was had the flag towards Evansville and Marquette gets the throw in. Yeah, center, center official has to go what he feels right. You know, your lines were there to help you, but uh, it's up to him to make the call, and that's what he just did, as we've seen uh, quite a few times today. Tom Weber trying to break along the far side over there. Corby Smith there, as well as Jeff Shoy. And uh, out of bounds, throw in awarded to Marquette. Getting back towards midfield. See Steve Proven, number 12, battling there with Merriweather. And it'll be a free kick awarded here to Marquette. Tom Gambanese. Letting the Marquette offense and Evansville defense really get back towards the goal mouth area. And we see Pat Holton come in, try to get something going. Evansville clearing the ball out. Throw in a word again to Marquette. Spatsik with two Evansville defenders and a push and a shove. And Evansville comes away with a pretty clean break. We see the quickness of Steve Church here. Oh, that's a bad, that's a bad foul. He might be going. That's Church, he was breaking goal. That, we might see a red card come out here. I'm not well, sure. Definitely play a stop, so it's going to be a definite card. Whether it's going to be a yellow or a red, we'll have to wait and see. I would not be surprised to see him going here. I mean, Church, he's a good move, breaks the goal. You know, that's a, what they call in the FIFA prof professional foul. Uh, takes around. I don't know in the World Cup last year, a lot of bookings, a lot of red cards like that. And yes, he's It going. is a red. Tom Weber, and you could tell that even before the card was issued, he was concerned with Steve. He went over on the ground to make sure that he was okay. Not really a dirty play a as much as a defensive play, I don't think. Yeah, but it, it was pretty obvious. No chance of getting the ball there. I mean, you know, he might have saved the goal, but then again, he's gone this game and he's gone next game. Uh, I, I don't know about that. He had another player coming in, but uh, just you, you hate to see a foul like that. You hate to see somebody be sent off. That's just a, you know, a bad play out there. And we talked about the... Uh, Lack of really support that uh, Marquette brought with them. Only three extra players as far as the bench. And Tyler Zisk, it looks like, is getting ready to come in. He appeared some into the first half. And uh, returning to the lineup for Evansville, Egan Eggleston uh, coming in for Steve Church. Evansville again trying to get something going here. Merriweather getting the ball over into the corner. Kirby Smith over there battling one of the Marquette players. Out of bounds, throwing awarded to Evansville. Let's see here, uh, Evansville takes advantage of uh, 10 players. I think uh, Marquette just going to leave Ithier up front by himself and just uh, pull the other defender back. So their back two lines of defense, the backs and the midfield, they'll probably be the same alignment, but instead of having two forwards, just going to have one up front, I'm sure. Shane Schmidt with the throw in, and again, Wolf coming out and doing a good job stopping it. Not wasting any time. Norman coming up the field, trying to get something started for these Red Warriors offensively. Jeremy Matthews in the middle, as well as Graham Merriweather. Coming over along the side now, Kevin McLaughlin getting the ball, centering it back to Steve Provan. Back to midfield. Rick Anderson from Marquette across midfield. Again, centering the ball. Ithian along with Spatsik there, and Ithian gets Spatsik over into the corner. First really opportunity here for Marquette to get something going. Centers the ball back, looks for Ithian, and a shot wide. Good save by uh, Harrington. Steve Provan, one of the midfielders, coming up with a big kick, and again, Harrington coming up with a quality save. Yeah, it wasn't that hard of a shot, but uh, Trey was following the movement of the ball, and he's more on the, the near post there, and they crossed it back in the middle, and, you know, good shot there to the far post, and he made a good reaction save, got a hand on it, and ended up coming down with it. Good save by Harrington. Good opportunity for Marquette there. 18 minutes remaining in the ball game. Evansville has taken a 2-1 to -one lead here with a goal coming in the second period by Corby Smith, his first of the 91 season for Evansville. Again, Marquette getting on the scoreboard first, back in the first period on a goal by Adam Ithian. And Evansville answering right before halftime as we see Boland breaking in. It's got Jeremy Matthews in. What a shot. Great pass, great shot. Evansville takes the lead now, 3-1. to one. Good goal there. Mark Boland finally got that run right, like I said, the first half. Needs to get that run down there. Pulls it back. Jeremy Matthews, first time left foot shot. Once again, another unlikely hero there. 
Comes at 17.39 in the ball game. Assist goes to Mark Bullen, the goal to Jeremy Matthews, making our score Evansville three, Marquette one. We'll be back with more second half coverage on TV 52 right after this timeout. Soccer field under 17 minutes remaining in the ball game. Evansville has taken a three to nothing lead. Two unlikely heroes here in the second period. First, 25-11, Corby Smith picking up his first goal of the season. 17-39, Jeremy Matthews picking up his first goal of the season. Assist going to Mark Bullen and also Nico Cachera. Yeah, once again, just another good goal. Uh, all three goals today have been, you know, real good efforts by Evans. We can't say that Marquette gave them to us or what have you. They've just been good goals. And here's another opportunity for Evansville. Trying to get in on the far side. Oh, and another God. one. Oh, wow. I don't know what, just as soon as I say Marquette didn't give one to us, so I think they might have there. I don't and know about that. That appeared to be Ian Eggleston, who checked in after the last goal. And we can see uh, Fred down there on the sidelines shaking his head, and the keeper, uh, Dave Wolf, is a little bit upset with uh, give another card here. one of the linesmen, and we see uh, time has stopped 16-13. I think what he's saying here is he thinks the ball is already out of bounds. Uh, there were three Marquette players around the ball there. Nobody could see it. Uh, I don't know. He's just out of control. It's 4-1 right now, 3-1. They're pretty much out of the game. Uh, he's just losing his temper here. Yellow card issued to goalkeeper David Wolf, And uh, right now trying to plead his case with the referee Tom Dragon. And usually, of course, I'm a baseball official, so I'm going to go with the uh, official's point of view most of the time. There's not really any chance at all to get a call changed like that, so why right. even bother? Yeah, it's not going to get reversed. Just a lot of frustration, as we said Evansville had in the first half. He's, he's going to have a lot of frustration here in the second half. Uh, Corby Smith puts a great goal in behind him. Then we got another one right after by Jeremy Matthews. Now this one by Ian Eggleston, who... Uh, who's had a lot of trouble scoring this year in some of the games he's played in, some of the JV games. Uh, Fred said, I know uh, he's never going to score here, but uh, I guess if he's going to score a goal, it's going to be a weird one like that. It's going to be today because oh, we have wow. really had some uh, different situations for Evansville. First, Corby Smith picking up his first goal, then Jeremy Matthews, and not too much longer coming at 16-13, Ian Eggleston picking up his first goal of the season. 4-1 Evansville leads, just under 16 minutes here, and Marquette getting a rare opportunity here for a breakaway. We see uh, Norman coming over for a possible shot there, working in the middle, and Ithian was basically out of position on that. Norman trying to get the ball back. Ball cleared and out of bounds by McLaughlin, and a goal kick awarded here to Evansville. It's pretty obvious now that those, uh, the ejection there and, uh, you know, playing to Marquette with 10 guys right now, Evansville definitely took advantage of that. It's something you like to see, you know, when you get that advantage, you're going to have to use it just like in hockey, you know, on the, you know, when, when the other team gets a man down. Well, that's just what they've done today. You know, and sometimes when a team gets just 10 players, that they might even play better, but Marquette just kind of falling apart right now, beating team. And it appears that Fred is using this uh, game here to get a few more players into the lineup. Matthew Blackborn, a freshman from England, has uh, entered the ball game. And it looks like a couple more down there getting ready to check back in. Marquette again coming up with uh, opportunity there, but a good save again by Harrington coming out and making sure that there was not going to be a possible shot on goal. Yeah, this is Matthew's first game back since uh, ankle injury against uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee. He's been... Uh, not practiced for about a week, then he's been back this last week and missed a couple games, but I'm sure he's glad to you know get back in the lineup, get a feel for the game again. Evansville continues controlling at midfield. Matthew Blackborn around Norman there, and we see him trying to clear the ball back out. Jeremy Matthews breaking away, and Wolf coming up, making sure that uh, no opportunity for Evansville. Clearing the ball across midfield, and most of the Marquette players still back here in the defensive half of the field. Not really an opportunity here, and just a clear kick. Harrington coming out, and uh, right now it appears that Evansville has really taken over both domination and also the ability to score at will. Yeah, playing with 10 guys, I mean, it's not something you're going to practice at all, you know, in your training sessions, and, uh, you know, they just haven't adapted to, you know, what, you know, what, what areas you have to compensate for with the ejection there, and uh, they're just not, not gelling together right now with just 10 guys. It just isn't working for them. Again, a red card issued at 1933 to Tom Weber, and uh, really not so much a bad play on his part. He did a good job defensively making sure that a possible breakaway for Evansville was not going to happen, but a little bit dangerous situation we saw 
Church on the drive and uh, just kind of tackled him from behind, tripped him up, and uh, was issued a red card. I mean, you never want to say, you know, it's a good foul, but, uh, I mean, he did what he had to do. Uh, you know, maybe if he wouldn't have made the foul, you know, Steve might have missed the goal and it might have stayed 2-1, you never know. You know, he's gone, now he's hurt the team more, you know, just have 10 players, and, uh, you know, that just kind of stuff happens. And so, uh, the match for the back into the lineup is Pat Holton from Marquette, replacing Gerald Concannon, who had been in briefly. And also coming back, Greg Brown for Evansville, for replacing Graham Merriweather. And Graham has kind of been on an offensive binge the past three or four games, kind of quiet here this afternoon. Yeah, he's something he has to do. Uh, you know, you know, when we're going through rough times, everybody, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of vocal su suggestions. You know, oh, let's pick it up, let's do this. But Graham's really showed it with his play, which is exactly what these young players that needed somebody to look up to. And Graham's really been the one down the stretch here lately. As you say, it's been kind of quiet this afternoon, but you know, all in all, these last couple games we've won, he's just he's really been the man there. Both he and Church have really been on fire as far as uh, offensive goals the past two or three games. Uh, of course, Greg Brown getting the goal against Loyola Friday night in the one to nothing win that clinched the MCC regular season. Merriweather and Church really the last two games, both at home, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and also Dayton. Oh. Merriweather had four and Church three. Evans will dodge a little bullet there. Harrington came out to clear it and uh, looked like took a bad bounce on him, almost whiffed the ball there. Uh, Might have gave Marquette a goal there. And Ithier back there waiting to see what happens. We see Norman using that speed and trying to get in there. And an unexcused tackle there by Nico Cachera. And uh, Norman went down. Looks like he got hit in the face a little bit. Yeah, I think he hit his face in the ground there. Uh, just tried to put the ball to the two defenders, split and run around Nico. Uh, Nico wasn't going to let him do it. Good defensive play by Nico there. There we see uh, Steve Proven trying to clear the ball, get something going for Marquette. Evansville, good defense coming up. And here we see Shoy coming alongside with a possible opportunity, Matthew Blackburn, and uh, just taken away by Gambonese, throwing the ball back to keeper Dave Wolf. And back in the first half, really came up with some big opportunities as far as the keeper was concerned. It seems like everything you kind of knew was going to happen, though, with all the opportunities Evansville had, everything that Evansville has tried here in the second half has worked. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think we made him look a little better than what he actually was. We didn't really threaten him that much. As you said, we only had seven shots, uh, not too many of them too challenging. Uh, we made him look, you know, really well, really good in the box there. We, you know, putting the ball up in the air, being six foot five, you know, that's what he likes, you know. But uh, all those shots on the ground or what have you, the, you know, Lasko kind of a fluke, and then the great goal by Kobe Smith, he's just really, you know, not much a goal he could do. Evansville leads four to one. We are under 11 minutes here in the ball game, and really Evansville taking advantage of. Uh, some opportunities here in the second half, unlike they were able to do in the first half, and uh, really picking up three big goals here. First coming at 25-11, Corby Smith, uh, Jeremy Matthews, the next one, 17-39, and then at 16-13, Ian Eggleston. Those three each picking up their first goal of the season, giving a Evansville a 4-1 to lead. And right now I think they're basically content for the next 10 minutes or so just to keep their offensive attack, not really concentrate so much on scoring any more goals, allow uh, Marquette to uh, dominate their defense maybe and then not worry so much about offense getting back maybe a little bit more on defense to make sure Marquette doesn't get on the scoreboard a time or two more. Yeah, it's funny in these uh, type of games here when you know, get a big lead, put some fresh faces in, you know, you know they're, gonna get another, they're really going to try to go and score too. So that's what, you know, in the case with uh, Ian, you know, he comes in after the goal with Jerry Matthews, you know, he's not going to hold back. They're going uh, full throttle and just going to try to stick as many, many as they can. And that's just what's happened. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one more stuck in here with some more fresh faces in the game. And you really, I guess, run into that in all types of sports. Whenever you get a lopsided score, yeah. you're going to have situations where some of the younger kids get an opportunity to go in. And obviously, they're going to be pumped up. They're one going to do their best to show the coach, hey, if I do get the opportunity, this is what I can do. Yeah, they, yeah, they just want to show for, you know, look, look, I'm on this team. I want to play. You know, I'm going to show you what I can do. You know, it might only be 15 minutes, but a lot can happen in those 15 minutes. And good defense there. We saw Norman right in front of Nico. Almost a handball situation. Took it off the shoulder. And uh, Jeff Shoy again clearing the ball, getting it into the Evansville offensive end. Marquette still playing the tough defense. Shane Smith trying to get something going and a little bit frustrated there with himself. Saw the possibility and uh, just a little bit too much on that kick. Yeah, he's just trying to wrap around it with the outside of his foot there. Hit it more with the intercept and it just carried out of bounds. 
Good goal kick by Wolf, clearing the ball down into Marquette territory, but a little too far into the hands of Trey Harrington. And right now, a little tactic maybe uh, slow things down a little bit. Yeah. Just going to take these last eight, eight minutes or so, you know, just like you said, work the ball around. You know, just trying to get a good feel for the game these guys just came in. I, I know, that, you know, when you first come in the game, your first couple of minutes are kind of, you know, rush, rush, rush. But, you know, now they're going to settle down, knock the ball down a little bit, and, you know, try to put another one in, in the back of the net. Just about eight minutes remaining in the ball game. Again, Evansville leading four to one. I'm Doug Emig alongside Keith Vondere, a red shirt sophomore this year for Evansville's soccer team, and a shot on goal there. Good save again by Harrington. Really not too many opportunities for the modern or the Marquette Warriors. Mike Carlin, uh, one of the uh, few replacements that has gotten into the lineup today there with a quality kick. As you see Trey over with that save and the save earlier in the second half, he's, he's returned to form, you know, a few goals in the season went behind him that I don't think he, he thought should have as well as other people, but, you know, good save there, good hard shot, he just takes it down, gives gives away the corner. You know, he's getting, he's getting back into form now. I know he wasn't happy getting those early goals scored on him early in the season, but, you know, everybody settled down and really began to play a lot. Enter the Evansville lineup for the first time today, Brandon Brocker, a 5'8", 150-pound junior out of Virginia, and also number 17, Jeff Smoltz, a 5'7", 145-pound junior. So uh, Coach Smoltz allowing some of the uh, underclassmen an opportunity to play here that has not really got a lot of playing time early here in the season, with the exception of maybe the first five or six games when it seemed like he was using a little bit of everybody. Yeah, but Brandon, the same as Matthew, uh, he turned his ankle. I, I, I want to say the St. Louis game maybe. Uh, it might have been after that, but uh, he's just not getting back. Uh, we had a string there with uh, Shane and uh, Matthew Blackburn and Brandon. They all had pretty pretty bad ankle, ankle sprains. I know the first couple of weeks of ankle sprains, the ankles can be tender and you can't do much on it. And He's just now trying to work his way back in the lineup and uh, just to say, you know, he's going to come out here and try to do all he can. He's last couple minutes. And there we see Hithian trying to run the ball down in the corner, centering it back towards the uh, middle part of the penalty box area. Marquette just not really a whole lot offensively. We talked about the shots on goal five in the first half. The uh, one coming early in the contest, 32-50 by Adam Ithian, and really that has been the only offensive threat from Marquette. Basic domination all game long by Evansville, and I think with the frustration that we had in the first half, they have really came out here in the second half and realized the possibility it's just a matter of time. If we keep getting those opportunities, more times than not, the ball is going to start falling our way. Yeah, coming into the, end of the season, though, I'm sure Fred's going to, you know, really say, look, you know, we've had some bad starts. A lot of goals put behind us in the end of the game. We have to, you know, that's going to have to stop, you know, once we get the MCC tournament and if we get, you know, into the NCAA tournament because, you know, that all those teams are going to be good. It's going to be good play, you know, and if you give up a quick goal, well, then, hey, you might not get one back. And Pat Holton. Uh, almost undercutting the keeper Trey Harrington for Evansville and uh, he is down and not sure exactly if he came down wrong uh, you can see he's kind of rolled up into a ball and Nico Kachera around there yeah, he came up high for that ball high ball uh, guy coming underneath him he's his second time in two games he's been down I hope he gets up like uh, Friday night but uh not much movement down there. I don't know if it's his back or, you know, lower back down there towards his buttocks. I'm not, not too for sure what he hit. Well, we've talked about Evansville's success. When you look at really the seasons that they've had, last year was just exceptional, having the record that they did. And really, nobody expected them to do the same thing this year. 24-1-2, getting all the way to the... Uh, semifinals in the NC2A tournament before bowing out to Rutgers and struggled a little bit early this year when you look at the early season went over to uh, Portland, Oregon for the Umbro Invitational won the first game of the season against Simon Frazier then got beat by the host team Portland one to nothing. then a tough loss here at home to Tulsa and really two losses in a row at home Tulsa and then St. Louis the uh, following week, and that was something that Evansville fans were not really accustomed to seeing. Yeah, it's hard after season last year. There's a lot you can look down on, losing all those players. As I said, you know, a lot of role players, Shane Bird, you know, just players like that. Guys that play a role like that, you, you know, you're just not going to replace. And it appears that this injury is a little bit more serious than we first thought. With a break in the action, we've got 5-19 remaining in the ballgame. Evansville basically dominating now 
as much as the game and the scoreboard. Evansville leading Marquette four to one. We'll be back with more second half coverage of Evansville soccer after this timeout. The field, 5-15 remaining in the ball game here. Evansville basically taking over the second half here, leading Marquette four to one. But right now everybody's concerned with the keeper, Trey Harrington. He went down, as I said, kind of almost got undercut and he hit the ground and has basically not moved since. Yeah, he's not much moving down there. Uh, you know, a lot of them, you know, they might be telling him not to move or then again, he might not be able to. You just can't tell. Hard to, I don't know, Friday night, I thought he was hurt pretty bad, and he got up, you know, walked away from me. He's all right, but uh, right now we got we have two doctors out there. Uh, I think they just called the ambulance in. Uh, they're coming out to stretch it. It's just it's a bad note for Fred's 300th win and a win today. This just sets a bad note on it. Well, everyone came in knowing that Evansville was on a roll. We've talked about it all game long. The last nine games, seven, one, and one, and after that, such a bad start really i guess if you're an evansville soccer fan basically most people would be pleased with that but coming in nine four and two five oh and one in the mcc and we talked about they won the uh, mcc regular season title friday with a victory over loyola one to nothing greg brown getting a goal there and today it's kind of been a uh, time for uh, some of the unsung heroes to come through with some goals. You look at uh, Steve Church get with the first goal, 126 in the first half. You expect that from him. But really the second half, you look at Corby Smith, Jeremy Matthews, and then Ian Eggleston being able to pick up the three goals here, making four to one game. Yeah, it's been, a, you know, basically a whole weekend of unlikely heroes with uh, Greg Brown with that, you know, just a spectacular goal Friday night. And, uh, you know, the goals today by Jeremy and Ian and uh, Corby. But, uh, you know, this right here just kind of brings a, you know, a bad note on I don't want to harp an injury, but, you know, this, I don't know, I don't like to see this. You know, with John Pro going down last year, you, you know, out for the season, and, you know, you know, we got him back this year. Hate to see, you know, lose trade now. We got a good backup in Brooks Mon Monahan from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't want to be playing this way. But it, this just looks really bad. I'm kind of worried to see what, you know, anxious to see what's, what's going on here. Well, you are a red shirt this year. Uh, what has been your role as far as being a part of the team? You go well, through with the practices and everything? Well, yeah, um, I'm not able to practice. Uh, but I was supposed to have a surgery uh, last Monday, and, uh, you know, uh, if I had the surgery, chances of coming back and playing wouldn't be that great. So, uh, you know, I want to look at other options, got a couple more opinions, and, you know, I was like, look, well, uh, if I don't have surgery, you know, I'm, you know, do some rehab for it, get my back a lot stronger, then I probably will be able to do it without surgery. So, I, you know, that's the route I'm taking right now. Uh, uh, you know, in, in this day and age of sports, though, you think, you know, I'm hurt, you know, give me a surgery and, you know, then blah, 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 you know, a few months I'll be back in and playing. But, uh, you know, when it's a back, it's a little different, you know, because that's going to hurt you for the rest of your life. You know, I never know, uh, you know, with the surgery, I might get three good years of soccer left, but uh, maybe not uh, ten good years of, you know, life yet. So uh, that's what I'm taking right now. I'm just going to, you know, try to get that back in shape. Maybe by the end of the season, I might be able to come out and practice with them. But uh, right now, it's just a lot of stationary bike riding, uh, doing some stuff in the pool, uh, you know, just a lot of a lot, lot of exercise and stuff, you know, getting back in shape. I'm sure that that is not easy, seeing that, uh, especially since they have really gotten on their own the past uh, 10 or 11 games, really gotten back into the swing of things, you not even being able to get down on the bench most of the time and being in, in, involved in part of this uh altercations and really the fun part as far I'm sure that you didn't miss the early part when they were struggling a little bit and you didn't really have to go through the frustration of practices and the situations that they were going through. Yeah it's almost more frustrating though sometimes just sitting up here like you know as we said it, it seems a lot easier from up here and, and it's one thing on the bench you got a uniform on you can come in and you know make a change with your play but when you're up here it's just so much different. Well they have moved Trey onto the stretcher and with all the uh, personnel around him, it's really hard to say exactly what the situation is. But we said once he hit, he basically got into a ball and uh, yeah. didn't do hardly any type of movement after that. And uh, see the uh, medical personnel on hand, and I'm sure that they're going to get him to the hospital. And yeah, if nothing else, precautionary measures just to make sure that uh, everything's okay. And again, you hate to see a situation like that, especially in a game that has the billing that this does. Evansville basically coming out, winning the MCC Friday night, and of course the story here this afternoon, Coach Smaltz going for win number 300, and it appears he is on that way, 519 left here in the ball game. But really a uh, down note. As far as Evansville fans are concerned right now, your main concentration, main concern right now 
is with Trey Harrington. It looks like they have that back and the head and neck uh, immobilized there. Uh, just like you said, I hope it's more precautionary than something, you know, really wrong with the nerve, nerves and what have you. Um, you know, I'm sure he's going to get in the hospital, you know, hopefully he's going to get that all taken care of. You know, just just kind of mars the whole afternoon today. It's kind of bad. Uh, I just hate to see something like that happen to you know any player, but you know as much ability and quality as Trey Harrington has, it's just a bad note on this afternoon. Well, play will continue. We are approaching five minutes, and uh, Marquette and Evansville will continue to go. Dave Wolf, the keeper for Marquette, coming out and clearing the ball out, making sure that Marquette might have a few more opportunities. And. Uh, I guess we've got a new keeper in for Evansville. Yeah, Brooks Monahan from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, played uh, two games, and Trey Harrington was uh, at his brother's wedding. Uh, the D Detroit game and uh, Notre Dame game, uh, you know, got two shutouts in those games. Very, very competent keeper. Uh, not, not losing much with him back there. You know, he's a good keeper. Uh, I don't know, know the players really like him. You know, full safety him back there. So uh, I'm sure these last five minutes he's going to, you know, keep the net just as Trey would. Brooks is a 6'1", 170-pound freshman, as you mentioned, out of Memphis, Tennessee. He's played a total of 235 minutes this year. Started uh, two games, has appeared in three games. Has a total of 10 saves, two shutouts in those two games that he has. So his uh, point average per game at zero. 101 -1 record, uh, one win, and also a tie. Yeah, uh, after those two games, he was... Uh Rated the number one keeper in the nation there with the minutes wise. Only, <laughs> only playing two games. Soccer America had him in their number one. Uh, you know, I'm sure as, as uh, most of the freshmen in the country, he's got to be one of the best. But, you know, with behind Trey Harrington, he knew uh, coming in here, he probably was going to be the backup. And I'm, I think he's accepted that role. It's got to be kind of hard, you know, as good as he is. But, uh, you know, when you got a guy like Trey Harrington in front of you, you're not going to play much. No, and I think he can probably learn a little bit from Trey, yeah, exa too. Exactly right. He's going to, a lot of learning this year. You know, a lot of freshmen are like that anyway. A lot of learning. You know, any position, but you know, with somebody, you know, with a goalie, it's a little different because you know you're only going to play one position. Whereas, if you come in as a forward or a defender, you might end up playing just the opposite. You know, there's so many, there, you know, there's ten other positions you might fill in as. But uh, yeah, Brooks is going to, you know, sure he's learned a lot this year from uh, Trey as well as uh, goalie coach John Hollywell. And we see an open-ended shot there by. Let me see, Brandon Brocker, and uh, just over the crossbar, and again. Whistled here, Dave Wolf has uh, not really had a very good second half, you might say. Started pleading the case with uh, Lee Eggleston goal that was kind of over towards the end line. Thought maybe that it was out of bounds. We couldn't see. The referee didn't acknowledge it. Ended up issuing a yellow card to Wolf the keeper in that situation. Yeah, I think a lot of that, it, uh, the shot had to come off a deflection off Wolf, and I'm sure he wasn't too happy he didn't catch it there. It's just kind of a little humiliation with the goal going in from that angle. You don't see many goals scored from the end line there, and, uh, you know, all the other goals, you know, as I said, you really couldn't fault him. They were just great goals. Just Two and a half minutes to go on the ball game, and again, Evansville dominating basically much of the ball game, really getting the uh, goals going their way here in the second half. A 1-1 tie at halftime, Marquette getting scoring started by uh, Andy Ithier, 32-50 into the, or left in the first half when the first goal was scored. Evansville dominated much of the first half, kept rather quiet until 1-6 left in the first half. Steve Church with the assist of Jeremy Matthews getting the Evansville's first goal. And I think that that really helped them a lot as far as momentum going into halftime. Not so much frustration. They knew that they had dominated, as we talked about earlier. Being able to go in with a tie like that, getting a last-minute goal is going to help your uh, momentum going into the second half. Yeah, just and just as we said earlier, it takes a lot of that confidence that Marquette built up, getting that early lead. It takes a lot of confidence away from them. And, uh, you know, we came out here, you know, as I hoped, and uh, I'm sure you, you know, got those goals behind him and going to walk out of here with Fred's 300th victory. But, again, that injury to Trey just kind of mars the whole afternoon. And best of luck, of course, to Trey, and we'll just have to wait and see exactly what happens there. Second half, basically, again, Evansville, they were able to get on the scoreboard unlike they were in the first half. 25-11 left in the game. Corby Smith picking up his first goal unassisted. Then 17-39, Jeremy Matthews with the assist to Mark Bolin and also Nico Cachera. And then at 16-13, Ian Eggleston with the uh, final goal. Gave Evansville a 4-1 win, and we are under one minute. Oh, gosh. And should be a uh, tripping penalty there against uh, Marquette and Concannon, one of the uh, few substitutes that 
Coach Jerry Panic had brought with the Marquette Warriors. That's a bad foul. Brandon already has that weak ankle there. I'm sure he uh, either got kicked in or fell in. That's just kind of a harsh foul there for Brandon, the weak, weak ankle the way it is now. 30 seconds, and it appears that Coach Fred Smalls will indeed pick up win number 300. And the Evansville is just getting ready to uh, wrap up another big victory. In their last 11 games, they will be 8-1-1. One, one. This is no longer a conference game. Of course, uh, Marquette getting out of the MCC, going to the great Midwest Conference. And uh, they will continue 6-11. and 11. Evansville moves to 10-4-2. And, and congratulations to Coach Fred Smaltz picking up win number 300. And if our camera guys can stick with it, we're going to have a water dunking session right here with Coach Smaltz right at midfield. And oh. happy 300, Fred. Not one, but two. Big win here for Evansville, 4-1. to one. And uh, Keith, I'd like to thank you for your uh, oh, no problem. help up here. You kind of help us through all of this. And uh, we'll be back with some more post-game festivities. Aces Soccer continues on TV 52 right after this timeout. <laughs> with the winning head coach today, Fred Smaltz, 4-1 to one victory over Evansville, but more important, win number 300. Congratulations. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. It's a little cold and wet right now. The boys got me with a bucket of ice water, but uh, no, it's it's nice. It's nice for us to, uh, you know, I guess an age milestone in your life or uh, <laughs> something like that or in your career. Pretty tough first half. You guys basically dominated as far as offense, not really being able to get anything going. Then two minutes go, you finally get the first goal of the uh, first half. Steve Church coming yeah, in. It was, it was very important that we got. Uh, <laughs> this is my other trophy for the day. This is my little girl, Catherine. What do you think of Dad? Mm, nothing. <laughs> But back to the game. Big first half goal by Steve Church gave you guys a little bit of momentum going into halftime. Well, it was very, very important that we get that goal before halftime because if they get a chance to get in and get realigned themselves and, uh, you know, set up a game plan for how to prevent us from scoring in the second half, it can really be a long day. Uh, for us to become, to get back into it and be tied at halftime was most important. And then for the, I mean, three goals by freshmen in the second half that really came through for us. That's great. That's kind of a sign of the times that we're starting to mature and we're starting to uh, have contributions from those guys rather than just have them be passengers. Keith and I refer to it kind of a game of uh, unsung heroes whenever you get all three getting the first goals of the season. And uh, not really so many on-goal shots, but uh, opportunities were there and good yeah. job for Evansville. We, we, we built a lot of pressure. We created a lot of chances, and that's what we needed to do. That's why, I mean... It, really wasn't a worry uh, at, at the half, uh, you know, as much as it was uh, <laughs> a concern. Right, right. And uh, I guess the bad thing about this game was Trey Harrington. What do you know about the injury? Uh, he, was, uh, he was upended in a goal mouth uh, collision and uh, landed on his, land, actually landed, looked like he landed on his lower back first and kind of whiplashed his head into the ground. and. Uh, He's very sore, and he had a little he had a little numbness and things like that. And beyond that, we don't know. I mean, the preventive measures it looked terrible. You know, they had him in a collar and everything else, and they took him off. But that's that's what they have to do. Congratulations on a big win today. 300 aces continue to go. Thanks, Brett. Well, I think the fact that it was number 10 on the year was more important than it was 300 career-wise because this year is going to hinge on some numbers of wins. Thank you. Appreciate it, Keith. If you want to step in here, we'll uh, conclude this. Great game here for the Aces, and uh, Coach Smaltz alluded to it. Not so much worried, and you kind of expect that about career win 300, but I think the Aces really are starting to find out what it takes to get going again and uh, are on a roll. Yeah, this uh, win puts Fred in an elite group of 11 or 12 coaches all over the, you know, the history of college soccer in the United States. And uh, just as he said, you know, it's more important to get that 10th win instead of the 300th win. And uh, like I said, if it would have been a loss, it would have been number five. And, you know, with five losses, it's going to be hard getting that tournament without the automatic bid. But they came out second half, did what they had to do, and I think everybody's going to be pleased except for the injury to Trey, just as you said. That's going to kind of, you know, blacken the afternoon. But other than that, it's been a, you know, an enjoyable day for the Aces and their fans. Well, I'm glad you could join us for the broadcast. And uh, if Darren runs into more health problems, laryngitis, we'll be looking you up rather early. Alrighty. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. For Keith Von Ray, my name is Doug Emig. And for our producers, Amy Rexing and Rick Goodman, we'd like to thank you for watching Evansville Soccer tonight. Stay tuned. High school sports will continue as well as collegiate sports here on TV 52. Thanks for watching and have a good day.